So, hi guys. Today, my topic is Apple. Currently, Apple is committed to bringing the best, use, best user experience to its customers through its innovative hardware, software, and service, which could be regarded as Apple's business strategy. Okay, so the mission of Apple in 2018, Jobs started the mission statement for Apple was to make a contribution to the world by making tools for the mind that advance humankind. Later, in Tim Cook's era of Apple, Apple's vision could be concluded into four points. The first point is Apple is focusing on innovation, which could be simple, not complex, based on two unique features, which are deep collaboration and cross-pollination in different groups for innovation purposes. This second one is to own and control technologies for all the products and participate in the market where Apple could make a significant contribution. The third one is Apple only focusing on a few products, which are the most important and meaningful. The last one is to gather excellence in every group and have self-honesty to correct mistakes and encourage to accept and push changes. Both Jobs and Cook define and boost Apple as an innovator in its high-tech industry. And next, let's talk, talk about the organizational culture. To famous companies worldwide, there is one thing in common thing is their unique organizational culture, which is a symbol and the soul of a company and is considered as the access to the success. The specific organizational culture reflects the ways to innovative manage human resources and design organizational structure. Innovation is essential for electronics companies survival, including creative ideas and high speed of new products introduction, which are important to keep customers interest and to maintain customer loyalty. Apple's strategy is focusing on customers, which means Apple uses an innovative strategy based around the ideas that Apple knows better than customers themselves, explores customers' needs that are not developed, and emphasizes on the relationship building with customers. Next is about human resources management. Human resources management is important to affect companies' operation, including recruiting, training, motivating, offering safety and satisfactory salary. Next is the important part is about the organizational structure. Organizational structure influences the behavior of individuals and groups and the information transfer among them. Currently, with the development directed by Cook, Apple's organizational structure is still a hierarchical style but flat. The main reason for Cook to operate Apple that way is to ensure focused realization of his innovative ideas and clear vision for the business. Since 2011, Tim Cook has worked on the decentralization of decision-making, which is a new attempt to create innovation and creativity, to achieve a high level of decentralization and to be specific for different functions. There are Apple strategic partners in various areas, which fill the structure of the board of directors, like Boeing, Walt Disney, and the former vice president of the USA. The strategic partners help Apple to make advantage of some areas like transportation, public relations, animation design, and so on. Next is about the uh, industry analysis. I use Michael Porter's comparative forces model. The first one is Threat of new engines. The threat of new engines is assessed as moderate because the role of mobile handsets moves toward a high degree of a specialization. Entering into this market is easier. And there are several successful newcomers like Apple, HTC, Xiaomi, and so on. This industry involves expensive R&D in technology and facilities intellectual property rights, which are barriers for new entries, but the increasing adoption is a drive for newcomers to expand. The next one is the threat of substitute products. The threat of substitutes is assessed as weak 
fixed line telephone is one possible substitute with minimal threat because the function of fixed line telephones is substitute for smartphones, laptops, and other electrical appliances. The bargaining power of suppliers. Supplier power is assessed as moderate. In this electronics industry, suppliers strengthen their supplier power while producing some products which are specific to them and exploring rare earth materials for their products. So to manufacturers, it is an important choice for them to choose suppliers and to meet their standards, which is related to the quality to choose components and modules to enhance the performance. Currently, some smartphone manufacturers are also suppliers like Samsung and LG, which could make the market is complicated. Buyer power is assessed as strong. There are two categories for buyers in the market. One is the retailer outlet, like Europeans, Carvon Warehouse, Walmart in the North America and Best Buy. The other one is the mobile network operator, including AT&T, Bell and Rogers. Those mobile network operators have to bid for the contracts with market players and stock the latest smartphone to meet customers' needs. To cust companies like Apple, which has 447 retail stores in 16 countries, it has a pretty strong power for forward integration, which is lowering buyers' powers. To smartphone companies, in order to win in the market, sometimes they have to keep the cost down to lower price to meet customers. Next is the rivalry among existing competitors. The overall rivalry is assertive strong in this market. This industry is full of intensified rivalries, which drives companies to expand greater resources on research for differentiating features. But the features cannot be guaranteed to meet customers' needs. Currently, different players try to find out a niche market or a market they fit to survive. For example, Xiaomi focuses on budget alternatives. Apple focus on rival of closed iOS ecosystem, which serves a means of differentiating and appeal. Next is about the operating analysis. I will use the SWOT model to do the analysis. The strength of Apple is strong R&D and has a leading market position, improved financial stability. The weakness is legal dispute. Product will cause high dependence on iPhone and iPad product lines. The opportunities are free. Focus on Apple Pay, strengthening presence in artificial intelligence. That's what we call AI. New attempt in Apple CarPlay. The threats are competitive pressure, dependence on network providers, penetration on Android operating system. So. Um, combining strength and weakness, the opportunities and threats into TAUS matrix, TOWS TAUS matrix. I tried to conclude some strategies to help Apple for the future development. Next is about the financial performance analysis. iPhone had a significant growth in the fourth quarter every year because the Apple special event hold every September for launching new iPhones. Uh, surprisingly, in the near few years, the sales of service are higher than iPad and Macs. So service represents an opportunity for iPhone Apple to make more money for its existing base of customers. Apple's financial report shows us the total sales in 2016, it was uh, more than 200 million, is less than 2015. Next, in, in different operating segments, America is the biggest market, which occupied 40% in 2015 and 2016. In Greater China, the sales dropped from nearly 58 billion to nearly 48 billion, which is a significant decrease. Furthermore, when we look at the different product sales, iPhone keeps the dominion position 
which is more than 60%. iPad and Macs did not change a lot of sales. The service sales increased from nearly 19 billion to nearly 24 billion. Gross margin has a slightly drop from uh, 40.1% to 39.1%. In operating expenses, both R&D and sales spending are more than in 2015. Apple is one of the leading companies in electronic industries, but still pay attention on current risks and potential risks. For example, Apple lists 27 risks, including men, may be unable to compete effectively in the global market. Apple depends on distributor and carriers and quality problems. So that's all my presentation. Thank you so much.